This is going to be a study on snake handling for dummies. Some men believe they have the signs of an apostle and they think they can handle snakes. The Bible teaches that the apostles could take up serpents as a sign to confirm what they preached. Look at Mark 16 verses 17 and 18. It says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And then look down at verse 20. It says, And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. So you see these things like speaking in tongues, drinking any deadly thing, healing someone, and taking up serpents. These things were signs, and these signs are what they used to confirm the word being preached. The apostles didn't just have the ability to take up serpents. They could also drink poison, speak in tongues, cast out devils, and heal the sick. I suppose modern day snake handlers are doing this to show their faith, but the purpose of picking up a snake was to confirm the word being preached with a sign following, as it says in Mark 16. And these signs were directed towards the unbelieving Jews. 1 Corinthians 1.22 says the Jews require a sign. After the Jews rejected Jesus Christ, God started dealing with the Gentiles and the sign gifts seized. I believe they will come back in the time of Jacob's trouble because that's when God goes back to dealing with the Jews. And you will see the signs again with men like the 144,000, Moses and Elijah, the two witnesses. And there's some creatures in Revelation chapter 9 and their tails are like unto serpents. Most likely men in the time of Jacob's trouble with the sign gifts will be able to be bit by these creatures and not be wounded. Just like the apostles in Mark 16 could take up serpents and not be wounded. These sign gifts will finally cease when that which is perfect is come. And that which is perfect is the Lord Jesus Christ. For now these sign gifts have stopped because God isn't dealing with the Jews. The Apostle Paul, who had the gifts of the Apostles, was bitten by a venomous snake and he felt no harm. He wasn't dancing with the snake and he wasn't seeking out the snake. He didn't have them in a bunch of bags, carrying them with him everywhere. He just got bit by a snake and he felt no harm. And that is an illustration of one of the gifts of the Apostles. Look at Acts 28, 3 through 5. It says, And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Today we don't handle snakes. I doubt the disciples ever danced with snakes. It wasn't meant to be some kind of show to prove how spiritual you are. It was just a sign for unbelievers. God had Moses drop his rod, and the rod turned into a snake. God had Moses pick up the snake as a sign to Moses that he was giving him power. But since we got that out of the way, the Bible shows us how to really handle a serpent. And first, I'd like to point out that the serpent is subtle. Genesis 3, 1 says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. The serpent is subtle and easily deceived a perfect woman in the garden. He changed the words of God. He tricked her into eating the fruit. 2 Corinthians 11.3 says, But I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted through, from the simplicity that is in Christ. The serpent that tempted Eve in the garden wasn't a snake in the grass, but rather Satan, who is the serpent, who appears as an angel of light. An angel of light looking like a 33-year-old male. 
because Satan isn't a snake, he was a cherub and he is now a dragon. He would have been the class of cherubs that represented the reptile class. But whether he appeared as an actual snake or as an angel of light, he still easily deceived Eve. The serpent is a lot more powerful and smarter than man. He was also created without fear, as it says in Job 41.33. You can't handle the serpent. Anyone who tries to handle the serpent usually gets handled. You saw what he did to Job if you read that great book of the Bible. He got Abraham to lie. He got Noah to get drunk. He got Lot to commit incest. He got David to commit adultery and murder. Greater men than me and you have been slain by the devil. We can't handle the serpent ourselves but we don't have to be ignorant of his devices. 2 Corinthians 2.11 says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Here are some ways to handle the serpent. Number one is to turn him over to the Lord. If you look at Jude chapter 1 and verse 9, it says, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. Michael the archangel didn't even try to rebuke Satan. He turned him over to God. And many people will get mad at the devil and cuss him or call him names. But the Bible says he is a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. He isn't afraid of me or you or anyone else. The best way to handle the serpent is to turn him over to God. God's hands formed the crooked serpent. God made Lucifer. God is more powerful than Lucifer. In the book of Revelation, Michael and his angels fight against the dragon and his angels and defeat the dragon and his angels. So if Michael and his angels can defeat the devil, and God also made Michael the archangel, how much more powerful is our God than the devil? Satan is the God of this world, but he's not as powerful as the God that made the world and the universe. The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God, the firmament showeth his handiwork. The Bible says for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen by being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that there without excuse, God made everything and he shows himself in his creation. Looking at the creation, we should be able to see how powerful God is. And if you're saved, you're a child of God and you're on the winning side. When the serpent shows up, turn him over to the Lord. Number two, the next thing we should do to handle the serpent is to quote scripture. Psalms 119.11 says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. You hide the word in your heart by meditating on it. You hide the word in your heart by memorizing it. And that way you can quote it when you're tempted. Jesus Christ quoted scripture in the garden when he handled the serpent when he was here. And the flesh, Matthew 4, 4 says, But he answered and said, It is written. Jesus Christ over and over again said, It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And Matthew 4, 10, Jesus says, says it again. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So Jesus Christ quotes scripture. He continuous, continuously says, it is written, it is written. Remember how in 1 Samuel 17, the Bible refers to Goliath as the champion. He was the reigning champ who was defeated by David, a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ defeats the reigning champ, Satan, who is the God of this world. We are part of the body of Christ. We are all members of his body. We make up his body, and that makes us champions. And this is why... We have point number three, which is, if you run into the serpent, remember you have already overcome. Many times the devil will come at a Christian and say, you're not saved because you did this or this or this, or you're not good enough because of the things you're doing, or you're not worthy to serve God. But remember that you have already overcome. Revelation 12, 11 says, and they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. 
And then 1 John 2.14 says, I have written unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men because you are strong and the word of God abideth in you and you have overcome the wicked one. 1 John 4.4 4 says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The one who is in the world is the devil, and I overcame him when I got born again. Not by my own strength, I am weak and frail human being, just like you. And Satan is a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. Without Jesus Christ, the devil would eat us for dinner. I can't handle him, you can't handle him, but there is someone living in me that can handle him. Jesus Christ has manhandled the serpent many times in the past, and he will again manhandle him in the future. Satan had five I wills. Satan's five I wills, the things he said in his heart, was, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. For every I will that Satan spoke, there is also a knockout punch from the Lord Jesus Christ. And since Jesus triumphed over principalities and powers when he died on the cross, he also causes us to triumph. 2 Corinthians 2.14 says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. The virgin-born, only begotten Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, conquered death, hell, and the grave. He kicked death's teeth out, defeated Satan again. He was crucified for our sins. They buried him, but he arose the third day. He shed his redeeming blood for our sins, so he makes us to be conquerors. Romans 8, 37 says, Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. If you're saved, then you have eternal victory over the devil. Although he can bug you in the flesh, he can't take your salvation. 1 Corinthians 15, 57, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ.